Hidden away in this 17th century building is the Cathedral Archive. It contains an important collection of fascinating documents and artefacts that charts the history of the cathedral and provides an insight into the everyday business of cathedral life. This is a document from the 13th century. It's a volume or a register of all the important documents and records which the cathedral received. It's a key document in the cathedral's history. It's got a modern binding on it, but it actually dates from the 12th and 13th centuries. It's known as the Register of St. Osmond, and in it it's recorded in Latin, which was the language used at the time, but a lot of information to do with the foundation of the cathedral. This is a copy which was made by the scribes at the time of the papal bull issued by Honerius III, giving the cathedral permission to move from their previous site down to the um, site where we are today. And it talks about the reasons why they moved, so the lack of water, conflict with the castle guards where they were before. And that is really our key document in the history of the cathedral. My name is Caroline Cotton and I'm helping Emily with a, a project um, that is to do with what the cathedral uh, did and how it was involved in the two world wars and I'm helping with the second world war and at the moment I'm going through the chapter minutes. I came across some minutes last week when I was here saying that the friends of the cathedral had produced a lot of money for the blankets for the night watchmen and the fire watchmen um, in the cathedral who were sleeping in huts that had been put up. This book here is a report that was written by Christopher Wren in the 17th century on the fabric of the cathedral and it's still in his original handwriting. This is, was one of the first reports of its type that was written on the cathedral rather than just a historical guidebook type. As you can see there's some drawings about how he recommends the bracing around the spire should be improved. They were worried at the time that the spire was in danger of collapse and Christopher Wren was invited by his friend the bishop to come down and give his opinion on it. So this is, in his original handwriting, is a really important document for us. The archive is much more than a collection of artefacts dating from medieval times. It is the cathedral memory. It allows a glimpse into the past and helps us understand the duties and decisions made in the cathedral close and all those who have been involved in the running of this magnificent building and community. Uh, we have this sort of large box here and uh, other boxes like it uh, full of a rather disorganised collection of photographs and what we need to do is catalogue them so that we know what we've got and we know how to find uh, images when we want them. Now this one is a postcard of some sort uh, so I've got some information on the back here the Dean and Chapter gratefully acknowledge the generous gift of floodlighting to celebrate the 700th anniversary of the consecration of Salisbury Cathedral, and that was in 1958. Another fascinating series of documents we have are something a little bit more informal, which are a whole series of receipts and invoices relating to work done on the fabric of the building and also supplies. So here we have for 100 nails, three shillings. Something here to do with windows, eightpence. These are, were all kept by the clerk of works who was the person responsible for the cathedral's maintenance. And you can see on many of them, there's a hole going through the middle. So they were probably all kept on a spike in his office. I've also found a lot of um, references to what should happen with the cathedral treasures. The dean was asked whether the Magna Carta should have special insurance and it was discussed and at the next lot of chapter minutes that I read it was decided that it didn't need extra insurance and then further on they decided that perhaps it should be insured and it was insured for £50. This letter is dated 1599 and is a letter that Queen Elizabeth I 
wrote to the cathedral telling them that they should be generous in letting Sir Walter Raleigh have the use of Sherborne Castle. It has her original signature at the top there. But it's quite interesting because if you read between the lines, you can tell there must have been quite some negotiations going on between the cathedral and the crown about Sherborne Castle. And that obviously the cathedral weren't very keen at give, giving it away. So she, she sort of tells them off in it if you read between the lines. There were some photographs in this database here that I catalogued of uh, steeplejacks working on the steeple. As someone who has been a health and safety rep, I look at what those people worked on up on the spire and it makes your blood run cold, quite honestly. Um, you know, there were no safety rails, there was nothing like that. You'd just be walking around on planks on a bit of scaffolding. And that was how the spire was maintained, presumably for hundreds of years up until the um, late 20th century. A hut was built um, for the fire watchers and the cathedral gates were all closed at, at 10 o'clock and there, there used to be special policemen who closed the gates. Somebody found an access from Exeter Street through the bishop's palace back in, into the close and unfortunately the bishop discovered this and, and became rather irritated and there's endless letters going backwards and forwards from the chief of the fire watchers and the bishop's uh, secretary um, telling these men that they're not to come through his garden at night and they should come through the gate at 10 o'clock. This is a charter issued by Henry II in the 12th century. Uh, I won't fold the document out completely because it needs a little bit of conservation work. And what we're doing at the same time as cataloguing the archive, we're recording everything, all the repair work that needs to be done so we can establish a full conservation program to protect these items for the future. But you can see this magnificent seal at the bottom here, which is attached by these silk threads. And it shows the king on one side sitting on a throne and then on the other side, riding his horse. So it's the two images of kingship, the dispenser of justice and the king of his military prowess. I thought earlier that I'd find something very interesting and it was about the, the palace witch. But in fact, when I read it again, it was actually only the palace ditch. <laughs> Not quite so interesting. The archive is not just about conserving the past. It is constantly growing and preserving memories from the present day. We hope that in another 800 years, it will still be here for future generations to enjoy, share and wonder at. <laughs>